welcome back to Educator Dr. Mom TV. Today, we have a special guest with us. My daughter is joining the video today. She, <laughs> you wanna say hi? Hi, everybody. <laughs> she um, is learning some new things and she wanted to come on the channel and share some of the strategies that she has been practicing because she thinks it can be helpful to other children and also to parents that may um, be struggling with their children having emotional breakdowns when they don't get their way. So we do talk about the difference between being emotional and expressing your feelings, especially when things are happening that really hurt you. Um, we really try to give them a voice to share their feelings in respectful ways. And so this is not that conversation. This <laughs> is talking about how to handle your feelings when you don't get your way. It's a fact of life. We all get disappointed. We all have things happen that we don't like or we can't get things that we want. And we so- We just like fall apart and start crying and make a big deal. Right. So we're working on that. Um, we had a specific instant, instance that triggered this whole conversation, which this is my sensitive baby. Yeah. She's always been sensitive. And so I try to make sure that I'm validating her feelings. However, I also know that as a parent, I have to prepare her to manage her emotions when she gets upset, especially as she gets older. And so on this particular day, she didn't get something from me that she wanted. I was making myself something to eat, which is a rare occasion. You moms out there know sometimes you don't get to eat until half the half of the day is gone. And so on this particular day, that's what was happening. Typically, I just give, you know, I share with them whatever they want. And on this particular day, it wasn't a lot and I was starving. And so I was like, man, nah, not today. I'm not going to give you this today. I'll let you have something else. And she had a full fit. Um, do you remember this day? Uh, yeah. She had a full fit and she was very upset about it. And and so we really talked about, okay, so this is one of those moments where you have to figure out strategies that you can do to calm yourself down. Because if you were in school, this would be very inappropriate for what, for how you react, how you're reacting. And so. That's why I don't do it in school. Well, you shouldn't do it at all. But anyway, she's a child. She's growing, she's learning. And so we talked about coming up with some strategies that can help her calm herself down, when she doesn't get her way and she feels those emotions rising up. So she really came up with most of these strategies on her own. I talked her through them. We brainstormed together, but these are things that she came up for, with herself. And so we made it like a big deal. We got her a, a notebook that she could journal um, some of the things that she's doing. And she is going to share the things that she is working on in hopes to help some other children out there and parents, right? Right. Right, okay. So go for it. Number one, what's the first thing that you do to help yourself calm down when you are disappointed about something that you cannot have or something that didn't go your way? Tell why I am. Remember, you gotta talk loud. Tell why I am, why I am sad. And you're telling why you're, why, why is that important? Why is that an important step? Okay, so it's it's good to express your emotions if you're disappointed, right, during the days. What's number two? Go to a quiet place and take deep breaths or say a prayer. Sometimes you just need like long time, it's quiet time. So it's like best, like find the best quiet space you can have. So where are some quiet places that you go when you need to take these deep breaths and say your prayers? Um, the balcony, the closet, sometimes your bed. Good. Anywhere that's quiet where you can just kind of have a moment to yourself, right? And us adults, we have to do that too. So that, that's a very appropriate step. Okay. Number three, what's the third thing that you do? Think about what I am thinking. Think about what you are thinking. Okay. Talk to us about that. What does that mean? That means stop or what you're thinking now and think about what you're thinking. Like, think over what you're thinking. Think over what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. Does that kind of lead you into step four? What is step four? Step four 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think? That boy is. Think about what I do have uh, instead of what I don't have. What does that mean? That means think about think about the the, the, the things that you would have been able to that you can have instead of what you don't have. Give us an example of what you're talking about. You're dazing. <laughs> so she goes into this zone where she just like is in a daze because she's watching herself in this camera. So that's why you see her like, and we keep, I keep saying like, don't zone out. So then when I say you're dazing, I'm trying to help her to not stare at herself. You know, it can, know. can be a draw. Okay. So without looking at that, explain what it means when you say focus on something else. Give us an example of what that means. Um, like yesterday, mm -hmm. I wish it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, I wish I didn't have a school day, and I kind of made like a big deal out of it, and mommy said, okay, so focus on what you do have instead of what you, instead of what you don't have. That's a great example. So yesterday um, was a Monday, and she woke up just feeling like, oh, I need another day off of school. I wish it wasn't school today. And she went into tears. This is first thing in the morning. And so before we even went there, I said, do your steps, shift your focus. So she went over on the couch and she had a little moment. And instead you focused on what, what else, what did you, how did you shift your focus? At least I don't have school for the entire day and I have a right. little break. Right. So that's how she shifted her focus. And she said it out loud, which was very helpful because we also talk about, you know, you're modeling for your brothers, um, how to handle yourself. And so she said, I am upset that, you know, I, I'm disappointed that I have a school day today. I wish it was a day off, but at least it's not a full day of school. It wasn't a full day and I have brain breaks in between. That can be fun. So that's the way she kind of shifted her focus. That's her step four. Okay, what is step five? Step five is draw a happy picture or sketch in my Bible. Now, if you do have a Bible. Oh yeah, so she has a little Bible. Let's find one of your pretty things. Oh, you can just show them the front. Oh, yeah. That's cool. This is the front. Hope you guys like it. <laughs> so she found this little Bible. Um, actually, I found it for her because she's really into sketching, drawing. And it has positive affirmations on the side and little scriptures. And so this is something that she gets and she draws in. Or what else do you do? And if you don't do this, what else do you do? Sometimes I even write in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you write in it. Or you sketch in like, what? You um, sketch pictures in what? It kind of read it. I don't know. We can't hear you again. Um, you sketch in your coloring book, journal, this journal right here. What kind of pictures do you sketch? Um, pictures that has to do with this. Like this. Okay. And what's your last step? This is just like a fun step. Number six, play or do something else. Now this is just like a reasonable step. You can do it. You don't have to do all the steps if you want to. This is just for kids that um, need that are crying a lot and like don't get their way a lot and then they just like fall apart and stuff <laughs> yes so those are her six steps thank you for coming to the show today she um is very funny she's now getting to kind of see these a little bit more because i have to do it when they're awake because we're in virtual school and so whenever i get a chance i can jump on here and so now she's very intrigued she wants to be a part of it. I've, I've always been kind of protected in terms of showing them, uh, I don't know, you know, you want to kind of protect them, but she's old enough to voice that she's interested in it now. And so therefore I told her that she can participate when it is appropriate. So today was very appropriate and I'm, I'm proud of her for coming up with these steps. And I'm glad that she was able to come up with the ideas. And so I think it's really important when you're trying to get kids to buy into something that you allow them to be a part of the thinking process and a part of 
coming up with the strategies. And so these are things that she's practicing. We have to practice them all the time, but at least she has strategies, she, strategies that she can use, whether she is with us or whether she's not with us, because it's a part of life. Things are not going to go their way, right? They don't go our way all the time, especially in these COVID times. And we're all frustrated and you know, we want things to change and we want them to be different, but they can't. And so we also try to model healthy ways to express ourselves when we don't get our way and we share with them. I wish that today was different. I wish that this would have gone different, but it didn't. And so I kind of talk out loud sometimes when I'm going through my process so, so that she can see it modeled to her, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Also, be sure to subscribe and like the video. <laughs> so I guess we're going to check out now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you get value from this video. Share it with your friends and other children that might want to see advice from a kid's perspective. And we will see you later. And don't forget to... Subscribe and like the channel. Oh, bye, -bye. bye guys. See you next time.